Sex, we're gonna get to watch the tail of the Cyclops. Now, as we go through this, I wanna do this a little different than what we've done previously. With some of the previous times that we've read, it's been me telling you, okay, here's the text, read this, answer some questions. We'll discuss it, we discuss, read the text, answer some questions, we discuss. And that's how it's sort of been. And we're, we'll still do that from time to time. But this story, like I told y'all before, this story was not made to be read. This was not this was not originally written down. This was a story that was performed. It was an experience that you had. And I want you to be able to experience the story the way it was originally meant to be experienced. So instead of me just assigning you stuff to read for the next 15 minutes and y'all sitting there silent, what we're gonna do instead I want to show you guys and have you experience the story through the way that it was at that time. So basically, put your ancient Greek hats on and you are now being transported back into the time of ancient Greece. You're sitting on the steps of an amphitheater out in the midst of the crowds. You see one man in robes standing up front as he stands there he proclaims up to the heavens to all of his gods and goddesses, give me the inspiration to tell this story with all of the glory it deserves. And as he does this, he introduces the brand new sequel, introduces the brand new sequel to his first story, which was the Iliad about the Trojan War. This was a fight that ended all fights. It was 10 years long of fighting amongst all these people, specifically over this one lady called Helen of Troy. Now, at the course of this, at the end, now we're gonna focus in on one character, and he's introducing us, to, or starting us back into the story with one new character, character that you're at least familiar with Have you uh, had you read the story of the Iliad, Odysseus. This is 10 years following the war. The war has ended 10 years later. Now we find Odysseus. He and his crew are still on this island. They've been on Calypso's Island for quite some time. They've just been sort of stranded here. Now they're finally going to go home. It's been 10 years since they've seen their wives and children, since they've seen their family, since they've been anywhere close to something that is familiar to them. And now this is when all the wacky adventures start. So they first go to this island at the Lotus Eaters, after they sail out from Troy, they get on the ship, they go. Now they're sort of island hopping. They get to that place. It's boring. I don't care about it. I don't want you to ever read it. It's not worth your time. At least not for what we're doing today. So instead, we jump ahead to the tale of the Cyclops. So now, as y'all are going here, click on Odyssey Tale of the Cyclops text. Click on this PDF. I'm going to open it up in my read and write, make it a little bit easier for me to read because I have old man eyes. Then we start up here on, ooh, on page 13, we're starting up here at page 1. There we go. All right. So starting here at page 1, about halfway down the page, the Cyclops. Here's what we're gonna do. I want you to be able to feel and experience what it's like. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna read for you parts of this story. Now, some things we will summarize because again, we're not. I'm not gonna stand up here and read to you a full page explanation of what the grass looked like, which is what they chose to do. Because again, they were building a world for these people. Imagine going to see Transformers, a movie where you're supposed to watch big robots punch each other in the face, and you go in and all you see, instead of watching the awesome movie with all the metal parts, all that craziness, now all you see is you get a little tiny piece of text that's like this long, and it says, Optimus Prime threw a punch. The punch hit this other, who knows what, Decepticon in the face. What? Nobody wants to read that. You came to see an action movie to watch action. That's why you're here. You want to see giant robots beat each other up. Right? That's why we all watch Transformers. I watched it for the story, but 
guy. I'm on. I watched it totally to see all the robots kick each other's butts. It's great. It's a fun, fun movie. Especially Transformers 2. Best one. Now, sorry, I like to throw my own little stuff in here. Now, here's where we're at. I want you to experience to feel what this like. Again, in, in Greek, this story was a fast-paced action adventure. This was a fast story. This was not a story that had any breaks. It was starting and it went. So from that very first bit where they sail off from Troy, immediately they go to the first adventure. I don't like the first adventure as much, so I'm jumping you to the good one, to the good first adventure. Cyclops. All right, so now here's where we begin. In the next land. So again, they went to one. This is the second place they go to. This is line 110. So as you're following along on the text that you have in front of you on the PDF, follow along with that, okay? All right. In the next land, we found were Cyclopses, giants, louts, with our law to bless them, in ignorance, leaving the fruitage of the earth in mystery to the immortal gods. They neither plow nor sow by hand, nor till the ground, though grain, wild wheat, and barley grows untended, and wine grapes in clusters ripen in heaven's rains. Cyclopses have no muster, no meeting, no consultation or old tribal ways. But each one dwells in his own mountainous cave, dealing out rough justice to his wife and child, indifferent to what the others do. Okay, so just from this first bit, this is sort of like our panning in shot. We're sort of getting the layout of what this scene is going to look like. Where are we going to be spending most of our time in this scenario, in this specific, in this specific setting? So now we see we're in a land of what? A land of what? Cyclopses, right? So it's a land full of cyclopses, which are, what? what's a cyclops? Tell me out here, guys. I have no idea. A giant with one eye. Yeah, so a one-eyed huge giant, right? It's this huge one-eyed giant. That is just monstrous. This is my picture of what I assume a Cyclops looks like. It's beautiful, I know. But try and focus in. All right, so we have these Cyclopses. What do we learn about these Cyclopses? Yeah, we learn they're giants to begin with. What do we learn about like the way their society is set up? What do we learn about them? Just looking at these first couple lines here, what do we learn about their society? Just from 110 down to 120. What do we see, Angel? What's one of the things that we see? Just in those first like two lines. It tells us about their society, how they rule, and authority, things in, in their lives. What do you see? What does it tell us about? Oh, yeah. Where, what line was that? Second line, right here, 110. So, without a law to bless them. Yeah. So, like Angel said, they are living lawless. There's nothing like there's nobody like watching like, oh, uh, Frank, you should have been trimming your bushes a different way. We're going to have to take you in. Sorry, you're not complying with the uh, Cyclops Code of Ethics or whatever. But they don't have that. They don't care. They're just, they do their own thing. That's it, right? They are on their own. They don't, they, they don't care about each other. It's just like, yeah, I'm a Cyclops, you're a Cyclops, whatever. I'm going to deal with my own people. You deal with your own thing. And what do we see about them in particular and about that society? Uh, specifically coming down here a lot, lines 116. What do we see about their society? Is there much of a society? I see your head shaking there, Mitchell. What, what do you mean there's no society? Like, I mean... It says they don't have like they don't have meetings. They're not consulting with each other. What does that mean then? What are they doing instead? Being by themselves. Perfect. Yeah, they're by themselves, right? They do their own thing. You don't really have to meet up with other people to say, uh, "Hey guys, I'm going to do this thing by myself, and I don't care what you think." Because when you do that, well, obviously you care what people think. That's why you told them. That's why the uh, subtweeting and the stuff that you put on social media makes me laugh. When you're like, "I don't care what other people think." Hey, you do. That's why you put it up here. That's why you want everybody to see it. It's the same deal, right? So the Cyclops, they're not getting together and, and trashing each other. They're instead, they just do their own thing. They're indifferent to what the others do. 
They just do their own thing. They're in, they are strong, independent cyclops. They don't need nobody else to tell them what to do. They got it on their own, right? So here, we see they're independent. Boom. That's the first thing we notice about these uh, giant um, cyclopses. They're these huge, giant, I would presume like maybe 16 foot tall. You look at a basketball goal. You put Mitchell on the top of that basketball goal, and that's where the top of their head is. Like, huge. These dudes are massive, like 16, 17 foot, huge dudes, right? All right, now let's roll on going from 121 here. So starting at 121, we'll keep rolling. So this is where we sort of jump back. We've got the setting. Now we're gonna see sort of the specific place that we're gonna spend our time. So this sort of a, a zoom in to a specific place. As we rode on and nearer to the mainland, at one end of the bay, we saw a cavern yawning above the water, screened with laurel and many rams and goats about the place inside a sheep hole made from slabs of stone, earth fast between tall trunks of pine and rugged towering oaks. So we, we see where they live, where are they living? Where's this specific Cyclops living? Cavern. Yeah, he's living in a cave, right? He, he dwells in a cave. He's a, he's, a, he's a cave dweller, right? And what, is his, what does it look like his job is? What does he do for a living? Yeah, he's got some buildings. He's got buildings out there. What does he have in those buildings, though? Goats. Yeah, he's got like goats, sheep. He's got, he, he, yeah, he just takes care of animals. So think like more of like the livestock instead of like cows and all that. He has like, she, uh, he has like sheep, he has goats, uh, he has rams. Those are the kinds of the more fluffy, big old fluffy kind of animals, right? That's what he's sort of taking care of. Because when we saw up here, it didn't look like they had to do much anything to get food. Like, they were pretty well set on food. Why? Why did, what did it tell us up here about how their vegetables and fruits got to them? Did they have to work for it? You get free food or more building. They made their house without fruit? Huh? No, not necessarily. Let's look and see. Look and see right here. Let's look at lines 111 down to about like 115 ish. Let's read through there again. Look at those four lines. What does it tell us about the fruits and vegetables though? And how they're getting their food? Yeah, what do you see, Dana? How are they getting their food, man? Carving. Huh? Ah, grows untended. What does it mean if, if I'm not tending to something? What does that mean? If I don't tend to my lawn for like three weeks, what's going to happen to my lawn? It's going to overgrow and look nasty, right? But these dudes, they just don't touch any of the fruits and vegetables, and they grow up to these humongous things anyways. Like they don't, they don't plow, they don't sow, they don't touch the ground at all. They don't till it to make it work for the, uh, the food. It just grows. It just naturally grows in that area. So they're like, cool, we don't have to do that. So I'll find something else to do. I don't have to farm. So I'll just keep, you know, take care of sheep and, and rams and stuff. So that's what we notice about this Cyclops at least. Okay, so now we come down, we're actually gonna see the Cyclops that we're gonna be encountering for the next little while. So it starts off here, line 128. A prodigious man slept in this cave alone and took his flocks to graze the field. Okay, help me out here, Landon. What is, what is prodigious man? I have no idea. Help me out. What is prodigious man? Oh, uh, enormous. How do you get that? I don't know. It just popped up. Gotcha. Where did it pop up on the on screen? <laughs> uh... Top left. Perfect. Okay. That's what I was, I was actually looking for you to tell me that you saw it here. Good. Okay. One of the things I did want y'all to notice, because this is something that you would have got at the tail end of eighth grade, uh, that unfortunately y'all missed that part. So I want to make sure that I cover this with y'all right now. So one of the big things, at least in terms of what you're going to experience through high school, you're going to be reading out textbooks a lot, constantly, all the time. So I want you to be familiar with how to navigate those. 
especially even on PDFs. These PDFs are exactly the same. It's, it's the exact same stuff I have in my textbook is what you see on the screen. Okay, so I want you to be able to know how to navigate it. Because if you don't know how to navigate something, and I ask you, okay, all right, go find what this word means. And you're like, oh, uh, it means, and then you just freak out and your brain explodes. That's not helpful. I, I didn't get anything out of it. You didn't learn anything. It's just a bad experience for everybody. So what I want to do is I want to make sure that y'all know where to find the information. That's one of the skills that I'm teaching y'all this year. Like I told my seniors this morning, I'm not teaching you. I don't, personally, I, I know you're not going to remember the Odyssey in like four years from now when you see me at Chick-fil-A and you're like, hey, Mr. Smith, you remember the, when we saw the Cyclops and he had, the, you know, he was keeping care of the Rams and stuff? Like, you're not going to remember that. Like, I, I, I know that. But what I do want you to remember is the skills that you learn from reading the story. So one of the skills is finding information and being able to use that information effectively. That's the biggest skill that you're going to take with you into the job force, um, wh wherever you go. As you continue on through high school, that's going to be one of the big, big key skills. I'm still teaching the seniors that. I'm making sure that they practice that every day because that's one of the most important things. So here, I saw a word I didn't know, a prodigious man. Okay, I don't know what prodigious means. I have no idea. So what I did, and what Landon did specifically, he looked, he saw this word. He saw, okay, there's a little number next to this word. I wonder if that number appears anywhere else here on the page. Boom, right here, 16. And then it says our word that we didn't know, the word that I didn't know, prodigious. And it even tells me the definition underneath. It says, Enormous. Okay, so we know prodigious means enormous, huge, gigantic, big. We got the idea, right? And it's going to be off here to the side. Now, what you're going to see in most textbooks, you're going to see this is what we would call a footnote. Basically, it's just an extra little piece of information to help you understand the story as you keep reading. So instead of us sitting here at this word, a prodigious man. I don't know what the word prodigious means. Uh, let's stop for like three, four minutes and I'm going to go try and research, figure out what this word means after like 30 to 40 seconds of me staring off into the clouds, hoping I learn what it means. And then it, just, it disrupts your flow of reading. Like it stops. It stops you dead in your tracks as you're trying to keep reading. Now you're stopped because you don't know what word means. And that's unfortunate because then you're not going to get the story. That's the whole thing. You're, you're not trying to impede yourself on this process. You want to keep going. So they, the text writers realize this. They know there's some stuff that doesn't make as much sense. This is old language. There's a lot of old, huge words in this. They like to, they like to use these fancy adjectives and stuff. That's how they got you to remember stuff. Instead of saying, he was big, 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 a thousand times, they found other words to use it. Hence, prodigious. And that gives us a little bit more info. So most of the time you're going to find these footnotes off to the left or the right of most of your academic textbook pages. Like if you look at another old text, like let's say you're reading the Old Testament um, and you're looking for like some, like you didn't understand a word in a verse, most of that text is on the bottom. Those footnotes are in the bottom. But for academic text, most of the time it's going to be on the left. That should help you in sort of figuring this out. What y'all did when y'all were looking up definitions last week, that was where y'all were finding them, right? They were off to the side. You already had like two or three there, so you didn't even have to really look when you did those six definitions. You didn't have to look super far for some of them because they were right there on the page, all right? So let's, let's bring it back. Now that we paused and stopped, now that we know where our footnotes are, we don't have to do that ever again. We can, we can just keep rolling on. I don't know what the word means. I'll look over here real quick. It means enormous. Boom. I keep going. Sound good? That's a pretty good skill, right? You keep, you keep rolling along. doesn't hold you up for the next four minutes staring off into the sky. All right. So we start off. A prodigious man slept in this cave alone, took his flocks to graze a field remote from all companions, knowing none but savage ways, a brute so huge. He's seen no human at all of those who eat good wheaten bread, but he seemed rather a shaggy mountain reared in solitude. We beached there, and I told the crew to stand by and keep watch over the ship. As for myself, I took my 12 best fighters 
and went ahead. Okay, so we're gonna pause real quick because I'll make sure that we got this. All right, so the Cyclops that we're seeing here, what do we see about him just from his appearance and what it tells us about his appearance, his description? What do we notice? He's enormous. Yeah, definitely. He's huge. He's like 20 foot, maybe 25 feet tall. He is massive, right? He's this huge, massive frame. But what about him and his like facial features? What does he look like here? Shaggy. Shaggy. What you mean shaggy? Where are you getting that from? Because I'm not disagreeing. 133. 133. Okay, looking down here. A shaggy mountain reared in solitude. Yeah, that, that pretty well describes it, right? You look at his face. He's scraggly. He, he's not shaven. He's definitely not showering. He lives by himself. Why is he going to shower if he lives by himself? He don't, he don't care. He, he hasn't showered in 17 years. He smells awful. But he's by himself, so he's not trying to get a girlfriend. So he's fine, right? He's scraggly, he's, all of his facial hair is growing out, he doesn't care. He's got these gnarly teeth, because again, he doesn't have to prepare his food and like think of his personal hygiene and brush his teeth. He doesn't care, so he, he's got these scraggly, awful teeth. It's just, a, it's just a tough look. It's a tough look. But he's been living by himself this whole time. And not even just by himself in the Cyclops community, He's farther away from the Cyclops community, like by himself, in his own little tiny cave, away from everybody else, as best he could be. All right, then we see Odysseus. We cut to Odysseus' point of view. Odysseus says, hey, this is where we stopped. I told the crew, y'all watch the ship. I'm going to take 12 of my best dudes. We're going to go over there. We're going to be able to take this guy down. That's, our, that's my plan. Okay, so he gets there. Um, he, he basically, this is the summary portion of this, because all this is, is basically saying the last adventure they were on, he had met some dude that he was really good friends with. He made, he, he helped him out and this dude had like the best alcohol. And so he gave him the best, the best liquor. So he gave Odysseus a bunch of liquor and like this silver, huge bowl to drink it out of. And it's the best nobody on the face of the planet can resist it because it's just that good. So that's sort of where we're at. And then right here, lines 153 down to about 156, he just describes the snacks he brings with him. Just in case he gets in a vibe, he's trying to, he brings on some potions and some like HP ups. He, he knows he might get in a fight, so he, he's like video game logic. If I bring some food, everything's gonna be good. I'll just, you know, eat in the middle of the battle, I'm fine, okay? Then we come down, we climb then briskly to the cave, but Cyclops had gone field to pasture his fat sheep. So we looked around everything inside, drying racks, so there's a lot of cheese. A lot of these things are sort of hanging around. They see all these pens of the animals inside. And it's a huge place, but the Cyclops wasn't there. So they come in and they say, hey, um, the crew's like, hey, uh, quick idea, uh, Odysseus. I, I know you want to maybe stay here or whatever, but let's think about this lodge play. <sighs> let's, let's think about this lodge play. If we just take all this stuff and run, everything's fine. So then he says that makes a lot of sense, but we're not going to do that. And I'll tell you why when you come back from lunch. See you later. Oh, hold up. Wait a second. No, no, no. 1141. That's just the first one, right? Is that right? Hold up. I believe, I believe we head out here in just a sec. I'll send y'all in just one second, okay? I gotta make sure on the top. Anyways, he, he decides, hey, this, this makes a lot of sense. We're just gonna steal stuff. And they say, there's no need for us to run away and, and like stay here and get our butts eaten. So then he's like, yeah, that, that, makes, that makes a lot of sense. But I refuse. So he's, he's refusing to, you know, leave. He says, I want to see this Cyclops. That is the thing I'm trying to get. I want to see this thing up close and personal. Because, oh yeah, that's them coming back from lunch. 11.38 is them coming back. We go at 11.41. That's it. I was trying to figure out. I was trying to figure out why I was so messed up on my time here. All right. So I wish to see that caveman. What he had to offer. Well, 
for my friends, uh, no pretty sod it turned out for them. Um, so they, they had a pretty good idea. Let's take the stuff from this dude, jack all of his, like take all of his sheep, take all of his cheeses and all this stuff. We can feed an army for like seven months. We don't even have to fight this dude. He's gone out to field, so we don't have to talk to him. Everything's perfect. And he's like, yep, that makes a lot of sense, but we're not going to do that because I want to look at it. That's what you see with these epic heroes. They're, they they care so much about their own pride and what they want. They don't even think about like the logical stuff that makes sense. It's like, whatever. So we lit a fire, burnt an offering, took some cheese to eat, and we sat there in silence. And as they sat there, we had the giant come in, ca uh, carried a load of dry bows, these big old huge trees, to make his fire. He dumps them on the floor with a great crash in that hollow cave. And we all scattered fast to the far wall. Then over the broad cavern floor, he ushered the ewes meant to milk. So he's bringing in all of his animals in. But all these people, they scatter. Like all of Odysseus' men scatter to the wall because they're like, oh no, this is not where we need to be right now. And we definitely don't want him to see us. So he sits down, they, and then he closes his door. But his door is not just any regular door, it's a cave. So he has a huge rock slab that he just boom closes in now our dudes are locked in we'll see y'all later have fun at lunch <laughs>